In this video, I will look at some examples of getting the details right in experimental design. There are some key principles of design that you need to understand, and we have looked at those in other videos. But real experiments that are effective and efficient need more than principles. To illustrate the point, I will discuss experiments in agroforestry. Agroforestry can be defined simply as trees on farms. Trees are key components of ecological and economic systems. Farmers integrate them for a range of products, including fruit, timber and fodder, and for the services they contribute, such as soil fertility, water regulation, microclimate control or simply aesthetic reasons. As with all experiments, the design of an agroforestry experiment should start with careful specification of the objectives. From these, the treatments and measurements needed can be derived. Plots are defined and the field layout determined, remembering the principles of randomization and replication and the need to control variation. These steps in the design process are the same as for any other experiment. However, some characteristics of agroforestry can make application of the principles harder than applying them to, say, agronomy or crop breeding trials. With both trees and crops and perhaps animals in the system, there are more decisions concerning design and management of the trial, and hence more opportunity for inappropriate decisions. Agroforestry trials typically last longer than agronomic trials, with the consequence that design faults can result in an even larger waste of research resources. Objectives sometimes involve comparison of options for farmers. These may be as simple as comparison of alternative species, as in this example, comparing species for live fences. The experimental plots must be laid out and managed in a way that represent the way a farmer would manage them. It might be pointless, for example, trying to select species for live fencing from a trial in which the trees were laid out in a block planting. The objectives of some trials do not relate directly to options of interest to farmers. In this example, the objectives are to determine how competition between trees and crops depends on the interaction of above and below ground tree architecture and the tree phenology. The treatments and plot design have been carefully chosen to allow the relevant processes to be measured and, may not, and maybe do not represent agroforestry systems that would be immediately useful to farmers. Mixing such process and system objectives in one trial is often desirable due to the cost of separate trials, but can lead to conflicts. These need thinking through carefully at the design stage. There is a strong tradition of trials that are research designed and managed being carried out on research stations. Typically these are relatively flat, homogeneous areas with soil of high fertility resulting from years of careful farm management. Such sites are inappropriate for many agroforestry experiments, which, are, which address questions of land degradation or other problems found on farms. A site with suitable characteristics for these objectives must be found. This example from Sumatra shows the hilly and weed infested site selected for a trial. It's a sort of site that would not be considered by many researchers, but is ideal for the trial objectives which concern the establishment of rubber agroforests in such areas. The design, that's the shape, size, arrangement of trees and crops of a single plot, will depend on the objectives. In this example, the plots are small, only 6 metres by 8 metres. This is appropriate for the objectives, which are concerned with the effect of rooting depth on competition between tree and crop components. Practical considerations mean that large plots could not be used. An artificial root restricting layer has to be installed in some plots. The small size of plots means that a homogeneous site could be found for it, and it could be managed to give high levels of precision necessary to identify some of the subtle effects expected. 
In contrast, this experiment has system objectives. The aim is to look at the benefits of using biomass from the hedgerows as a green manure compared to feeding it to animals and returning the brown manure to crops. The plots have to be large enough to produce sufficient animal feed to measure its effectiveness. Economic analysis will be important, so the plots must be large enough to collect realistic labour data. The plots are about a thousand metres squared, but not all the same size. Fitting them into the available space while paying attention to the uneven even slope is more important than making them all exactly the same size and shape. Field trials are expensive to lay out, manage and measure. It's often tempting to save money by using small plots, but the resulting data may be invalid or inconclusive. In this example, the treatments were different cutting heights for the trees, with the objective of determining how this affects both tree and crop performance. A single row of trees has been used for each plot, and metal barriers installed in an attempt to isolate them from neighbouring plots. However, the environment experienced by the tree and the crop in any plot will not be the same as the environment they would experience if the whole field were filled with that treatment. The plots are simply too small. Trees can capture resources from further away than a typical annual plant does. A result is that trees at the edge of a plot can acquire resources from outside that plot and hence grow more than the trees in the interior of the plot. This can be seen clearly in this example. If the objective is to assess the performance of trees planted in large blocks, then the edge trees must not be included in the assessment they are left as discard or border trees. However, there are examples in which the objective is to study the performance of trees in small patches. Results from these plots might then be useful, as long as the effect on the neighbouring non-tree area is included in the assessment. In many agroforestry experiments, there is interference between plots. The effects of trees are spread into neighbouring plots, which are intended as crop-only controls. In this example, the depressed maize growth on the crop plot adjacent to the tree plot is clearly visible. This interference between plots can severely bias results. The tree plot, capturing resources from a neighbouring area, is performing better than it would if the trees were confined. The production per unit area will be larger than it would from a very large plot. At the same time, the production of the crop plot is is depressed due to competition from neighbouring trees, which is not part of the planned treatment comparison. This sort of bias can completely invalidate results from a trial. The influence of between-plot interference may be reduced by leaving large borders around measured areas. However, this is costly as large experimental areas which are not measured have to be maintained. Some above-ground interference may be controlled by pruning the trees. Below-ground interference may be controlled by installing physical barriers or root pruning between plots. In the example shown, the trench was intended to, to uh, prevent roots from, from invading the neighbouring plot, but it's not been successful. Maybe it was installed too late or was too shallow, or the roots have grown under the trench. Note also that trenches cut for root pruning should not be left open. This will alter the hydrological property properties of the plot and encourage tree roots to grow under the trench and up into the neighbouring plot. None of these measures will remove interference due to such factors as windbreak effects or water running from one plot and in, uh, in onto a neighbouring one. The rate of lateral tree uh, lateral growth of tree roots has rarely been measured, but when it has, it's often been surprisingly high. This Cespania cespan root had been grown 8 metres into the neighbouring plot in just three months. In semi-arid areas of the Sahel, active roots have been found 60 metres from isolated trees. This experiment is being carried out in a field surrounded by forest. It is certain that forest tree roots will be found throughout the experimental area, and the forest will also be modifying the above-ground environment. However, this might not be a problem, 
if the results will be applied to a similar area, i.e. small clearings in a forest, and the effect of the forest is relatively homogeneous over the experiment. In this example, a plot is a tree or hedgerow with parallel rows of crops on either side. The apparently haphazard layout of the plots is a result of a careful process of site characterization and attention to the problems of interference between trees in one plot and crops in another. The steps used were first topographical mapping to get the slopes. There is an uneven slope over the site. Secondly, cover cropping to detect soil fertility patterns. Third, inspection for signs of rocks, termite mounds or other avoidable disruptive features. And fourth, placement of plots so that tree and crop rows follow the contour and the trees of one plot are not too near the crops of another. The irregular gaps between plots were also then planted to reduce edge effects. The result was a precise trial on a patch of land previously thought unsuitable for experimental work. Many agroforestry trials are long term, five or ten years is not unusual. Careful characterization of the site is a worthwhile investment in such a situation. In this example, the trees have failed to grow on the left hand half of the plot. More attention to characterization might have detected the problem and the plot could have been placed in a more suitable position. Trees can leave residual effect on the soil that is detectable long after they have been removed. Indeed, this is the basis for practices such as shifting agriculture in forest regions or improved fallows. Archaeologists use crop patterns to map the position of trees and hedges that were removed hundreds of years before. In the upper part of this photograph, the residual effect of another experiment removed three years earlier are clearly visible in the denser crop marks uh, where trees grew. An implication is this, is that the designer of one trial must be aware of and allow for previous trials on the same plot. In the early years of experimentation with agroforestry, there were several attempts to produce compact experimental designs by using novel geometrical layouts, such as this Y-shaped arrangement. These were not particularly successful. The Y design was intended to reveal orientation effects in tree-crop interaction. However, it proved difficult to decide what any part of the plot really represented. It was all edges. Agronomists started using systematic layouts to look at spacing factors in the 1960s. Agroforesters tried similar approaches, such as this sophisticated two-way systematic layout. The hedgerow spacing changes from left to right, and the distance between the hedge line and the first crop row changes from front to back. While these trials might show up some interesting trends, it's difficult to decide what any part of the plot actually represents. A particular hedge, for example, has a different width of crops on either side of it. There are few such systematic designs uh, which have been proved satisfactory on completion and generally we would recommend avoiding them. All the examples of experimental designs used in agroforestry research shown so far are for classical small plot experiments designed and managed by researchers. The details of such designs can be complicated by mixing trees and crops, but the basic principles of design and the layout of experiments are much the same as those that have been used in agriculture and forestry for a long time. However, much current research goes beyond plot-level thinking and requires some innovation in design. I'll mention just three of these areas here. The first is the idea of working at scales larger than a plot, landscape scales for example. In this picture, the forested slopes are being converted to agriculture, with likely consequences for hydrology, soil and nutrient movements, as well as on biological processes. Is it feasible to investigate such things experimentally? There are considerable challenges. Defining a unit, defining treatments, replicating, measuring useful responses, and so on. But what are the alternatives? 
the usual approach is to study processes at smaller scale and attempt to extrapolate, extrapolate by implicit or explicit modeling and then confirm the results with observational studies. However, designed experiments can be used and probably they should be used more often than in the past. There is experience, for example, from those looking at water supply problems. The second example is that, is that of understanding the social processes in land use change and use of new technology. It's at least as important as understanding the biological and economic processes. Many aspects can and should be investigated by experimental methods. For example, we can investigate the effectiveness of different ways of facilitating community resource management, different ways of communicating information about technology, or the impacts of changes in local policies. All the basic ideas of experimental design apply, but few investigators currently think along these lines. Finally, the concept of participation can be brought into design. Participation in experimentation means stakeholder involvement in design, implementation, monitoring of change, data analysis and interpretation. It has become a key principle in development relate, in development related research and become mainstream over the last 30 years. However, much participatory research has paid little attention to experimental design ideas and consequently studies that fail to meet objectives are, are common. This isn't necessary. Effective experiments that, meet, that follow the participation principle and are also well designed scientifically are perfectly feasible. We'll explore some of these ideas in further videos.